Welcome back to Switch to Linux. It is Monday and it is time for another Linux Top 5. And as we are starting to end down this year, we don't have a lot more Mondays left. So I wanted to end with 2018 Linux controversies. And there have been some pretty interesting controversies that have sought to divide the Linux community and for interesting reasons. Now, I'm not necessarily going to tip my hat as to what my specific opinion is on all of these. Um, if you watch my videos, you kind of know where I stand, but I'm going to try and give you the pros and the cons of each of these as we roll through our top five controversies. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive on in. Number five, IBM to acquire Red Hat. And this one here, obviously, this is not a super major cons um, uh, controversial one. However, it does raise some eyebrows when a company like IBM, who some people say there's there's been some negativity in the past, there's some question as to some of their direction, of course, uh, there's there's ties into Lenovo with the Superfish issue from a couple years back. There's you know there's ties into AI. There's a lot of things, and IBM comes down with seemingly no real interest in this cloud infrastructure. Drops 34 billion dollars in cash to buy Red Hat out of the blue, and so this was actually announced not too long ago. So you can see that uh, they represented, um, uh, maybe it wasn't all in cash. Uh, oh, no, it was all in cash. Yes, it was indeed all in cash. So, of course, the, the some people say, well, this is great because, you know, IBM obviously is a huge company. Uh, Red Hat is the number one enterprise type Linux that uh, if you get certifications and things, it's probably in Red Hat. So this causes a lot of positive in the direction of saying there's this, this huge corporate sponsorship behind Red Hat, which means that they will effectively have amazing amounts of resources going forward. And on the flip side of this controversy, we have people saying, eh, we don't really know if we want a big corporation like IBM calling the shots for the most uh, readily used Linux platform in the entire community. So regardless, now this one might be more more concerning and more controversial in the business area, not quite as much in the desktop arena where I generally live, but nevertheless, it is a Linux controversy for 2018. Number four, NSA's spec encryption algorithm being included in Linux kernel 4.17. What? <laughs> well, this one did cause a little bit of a controversy and, and it caused another more of a head scratching eyebrows race because uh, this of course is a, is a uh, encryption algorithm that in theory is a very efficient encryption system. Obviously the deepest concern is that this is from the NSA. And some people say that anything from the NSA is effectively backdooring. We can argue that one way or the other. So how did this get in? Now, you need to understand that, that the, um, the organization, international organization of standards has rejected spec in Simon, yet still they managed to get into the Linux kernel, mostly at the request of Google, who wanted to use the... Uh, use the Linux kernel as part of a device to basically have better encryption from embedded in the kernel. Now, most systems, this was in the kernel, but disabled by default, except Arch. The one that whines the most about security, privacy, backdoors, and things like that, Arch enabled it by default. Nobody really knows why. So this did cause a controversy. Obviously, some people saying, hey, this is great to have a very good encryption, lightweight and, and very strong, robust encryption standard inside of the Linux kernel. Other people saying, oh, we don't want anything from the NSA in the Linux kernel. And so it caused this. Of course, the NSA has approached Linus Torvald several times about putting encryption into uh, into uh, or putting a backdoor rather into the Linux kernel. He's always rejected it. Uh, Eric Biggers from Google comes in. He requests the inclusion and go figure. They they go ahead and uh, drop that in. Now, I'll also note that 
probably due to controversy, whatever else, as of, it's either 418 or 419, I forget which, the uh, spec has been taken back out. So I'd avoid that 417 kernel. If you Maybe you want to do the 416, maybe you want to do the 418, 19, maybe. Um, so this is certainly a controversy where, yes, there was for a period of time, one or two versions of the kernel NSA spec algorithm was actually inside of the Linux kernel, which has since been removed. Nevertheless, that was an, an interesting controversy early this year. Number three. Google buys into the Linux Foundation. You want to know how it got into the kernel? There's how Linux was infiltrated by Google. Now, obviously, Microsoft bought into the Linux Foundation a couple of years ago. Google buying into it, it's like, eh, it raises some eyebrows. Microsoft raising eyebrows was a little bit more controversial a few years ago because Microsoft has had a history of being anti-open source and anti-Linux. Google has not. And so the controversy for this is the fact that Google is the number one data collection tracking conglomeration type organization. No, I mean, this is absolutely is a scary thing to have Google in your hand. And this is why I work as hard as I can to get as many Google services out of my life as possible. As a business person, you can't get 100% out if you'd like to actually succeed in business. Uh, but I don't incorporate Google into my personal life in any way, shape, or form, whether that Gmails, Drives, anything like that. I don't use it for anything there. I don't use Google on uh, on my, my phones or I don't sync my contacts to them or things like that. So that's obviously the controversy is who Google is. Now, on the flip side is Google has had a long history of being pro open source. Obviously the entire Android system is a Google owned product. And frankly, the Android hardware is some of the best hardware that you might want to get if you are wanting to customize your ROM and kick Google out of your life using Google hardware. I have a Nexus 5X that I use because it's the easiest to unlock the bootloader and install a custom ROM on. And uh, I, you know, I don't see this as a major, major controversial thing, but a lot of people did because of course, as soon as they got in, <laughs> NSA spec stuff gets in the Linux kernel. And so we have this kind of one of these, these issues here with, um, with Google. So Google did infiltrate into the Linux foundation by buying into being coming a platinum member. That means that Google has more say in what goes on in the Linux kernel than, uh, than they have in the past. So that is certainly why this is controversial here in 2018. Number two, the snap package revolution. Um, snap packages, flat packs, app images, all of these uh, all jumping down in, in, in embedded in this system. So, of course, what are these packages? Um, just generalizing for all of these. These are packages where the developer can make the package instead of having to rely on them becoming in the distro repository. And with that, it means that the app developer can package within that single image, they can package all the dependencies and everything that needs to run. On the pro side of having the snap packages and the app images, we can get newer software out to people quicker. For example, if you were to enable SnapD on Debian, you can have that old stability of Debian, but have the absolute latest packages, which is one of those things that, that Debian just doesn't always have is the most up-to-date packages. However, since Ubuntu started pulling in the snap packages, they have been starting to neglect what is inside their software repositories, so much so that if you look particularly at the package Caden Live that I use, the version in Debian Stretch is newer than the version in Ubuntu 18 because Ubuntu is starting to neglect packages favoring snaps over embedding packages in the repositories, which has been classically a better way to do Linux software. And so this caused a huge controversy because Ubuntu 18, which is the core of more distros than anything else. You can even backtrack, like obviously Ubuntu is a derivative of Debian. So, you know, if you're grandfathering everything in, then yes, Debian is more, but nevertheless, Ubuntu as a single distribution, which more distros are based on, 
Ubuntu is the biggest father distribution and for them to be neglecting their repos for snap packages introduces a extra group of challenges and that being that we can't possibly verify all of these so when malicious information came in they came out and said hey here's trust and security in the snap store and the most controversial part of this is when they say that the most successful trust model is based on the origin of software and not its content in other words we're not going to audit and vet the software as much as we used to. Instead, we're going to rely on these software vendors to make sure that it is right. And that is a scary proposition for anybody in the Linux world. And that is why this raised controversy. Yes, on the one side, we can get newer, more recent packages quicker without them becoming in the in the um, repositories. But on the flip side, you're going to get packages that really nobody's audited. And yeah, the argument still exists that, oh, you can audit those. The reality is that most of the end users don't know how to audit a package, but the repository maintainers do. And that's what causes uh, some of the issue. So there has been some divide over uh, over these single images. And then even further, suppose you do want to use these images. Do you want to use Snap? Do you want to use App Images? Do you want to use flat packs? And so this has kind of split a, a, dual, uh, a dual controversy, as it were. So nevertheless, this is a controversial thing in the Linux world in 2018 is what to do with all of these Snap packages. And the number one most controversial point of Linux this year is the contributor code of conduct. This thing caused more controversy than you can possibly shake a stick at. And frankly, some of the things are, uh, and consequences of this are coming to fruition. Um, this, of course, came on the heels of Linus Torvalds took about a month or so long break from the Linux kernel development to reflect on his life. Right at this point in time, the Linux Foundation rolls out the contributor code of conduct, which is based upon a code of conduct that has been objectively used to blacklist certain people and organizations and cause what some people would call a social justice warrior infiltration into the Linux community. And that's what causes some issue. On the flip side of this, people are saying, well, there's been a lot of people that may have been excluded from contributing because of their color or their gender or their identity or whatever else. And the reality is, no, people really weren't impacted by that as much as Linus Torvalds who was more often than not a jerk. <laughs> and so, and uh, it just happens that, that people that want to subscribe to this view of having this code of conduct based on, not on a meritocracy, which is what I want the Linux co code of conduct based on, but instead on diversity, tends to be thinner skinned people. And so when Linus Torvalds comes out and says, F that is stupid, um, they take it personally. And a meritocracist doesn't take that personally. They go back and say, well, how can I fix it? You know, and that's kind of the thing. So this has caused a major riff uh, so much so that several Linux developers said, hey, if you're going to start excluding anybody exclusively based upon gender and things, we might just have to pull the kill switch, uh, which is something that is in theory embedded in the GPL license that a person can say if they're not being part of the project anymore, they can literally pull their code out. And since so much code is built on the prior code, pulling anybody's code out could be detrimental to the Linux kernel. Now, this hasn't happened, but the threat is still very real. Now, Nevertheless, this code of conduct came down and it seems to focus more on diversity than it does on the quality of the code. And that's a sad thing because I don't care. I don't care who came up with the code. I don't care if you're, if you're gay or straight or, or trans or bi or cis or whatever you happen to be. I don't care. I want the code to be good because I want the system to perform. And that is unfortunately called a meritocracy. And if you think that, that you should be, you know, more involved in here just because of your gender, I think that that's a problem. Whether your gender is cis white male or whether your gender is an Apache helicopter, I don't care. I want the code to be good. And that's what most people are coming out and saying, we want the code to be good. So, and then the kickback back, the counterpoint back is like, well, but that's what we want. We want it based on the code. No, they don't. They want it based on diversity. And that's been the controversy. So that's what the controversy is about. Of course, I say this is already having rippling effects. Somewhere right around the period of time that this code of conduct showed up, 
An interesting little thing on the Linux Foundation website showed up on the donation page saying that 100% of charitable contributions to the Linux Foundation is not going to be going to developing the Linux kernel, it's going to be going to funding diversity programs. That to me is a little bit weird and controversial and more people don't know about it. If you go back and check the Internet Archive somewhere right around the time this contributor code of conduct was being discussed in closed doors before the public, that was published to their website. It wasn't there at the start of the year, it's there now. Somewhere around July is when that showed up. The contributor code of conduct was made public around September. And so, you know, the way that businesses and communications work. They've been discussing this for a while. That little line on that donation page showed up right around July, uh, based on my looking at the Wayback Machine. I didn't look at every single image. But that's kind of the what the controversy has been, is this contributor code of conduct. Obviously, Linus Torvalds did have some misbehavior through the years, and then they want to come back and talk about this code of conduct. The problem that people say is that this particular code of conduct, which was written by one particular uh, person, um, this person who wrote the code of conduct believes that meritocracy is a negative system where the worth of an individual is not based on their humanity, but solely on their intellectual output. And the reality is, I want my kernel to be done by a meritocratical system. Because, uh, I said that wrong, but uh, meritocracy does not care what your gender is. They don't care what your persuasion is. They don't care about your religious affiliations. And the reality is, that's what we need. We need a Linux code that is not caring about those. The problem is, as I said, that this particular code of conduct has been used to specifically include people just based on their diversity, and that's a dangerous road to go. That's what the controversy has been about. And so these are the top five Linux controversies in 2018. Without being too hostile, you can go ahead and list which side of the debate you had, uh, are on, but again, please be nice. There are absolute good points on all sides of all of these issues, and uh, I tried as hard as I could not to tip my hand in some areas. I fear some of it probably came out um, because this, hey, this show is based on my opinion. Uh, and so you can have a look at my other videos for more detail about what I think about some of these things and, and not. So thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video from Switched to Linux. If you'd like to help support the channel, check out the links at the top. There is another video over here. You can check out our Patreon page down here. And you can check out shop.switchtolinux.com for information on a t-shirt like this or some other designs. Thanks for watching and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.